In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform the wrist hyperflexion abduction of the thumb test, abbreviated as what test, to diagnose decavers disease. Get our very own assessment ebook and mobile app. Links are in the video description. Hi, and welcome back to Physio Tutors. The Kavar's disease is defined as tenosynovitis of the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis tendons due to repetitive hand or wrist movements. Different tests have been described in the past, with the most popular test being the Eikhoff's test, often wrongly named as the Finkelstein's test. Over the years, a misinterpretation has occurred between these two tests, the latter being confused for the first. As the Eikhoff's test is very provocative and causes many false positives, Goubaud et al. in the year 2014 came up with the Watt test. They found a very high sensitivity of 99% with a low specificity of 29% in the diagnosis of Decavers disease on ultrasound. This is the only study evaluating this test so far, which is why we give it a moderate clinical value to rule out Decavers disease while it does not seem to be useful to confirm the disease. The disadvantage of both the Finkelstein and Eikhoff's test is that they are both mainly passive tests that are not able to isolate both tendons of interest while also stressing unrelated joints such as the radioscaphoidal, the scaphotrapecial, the trapezial metacarpal and the metacarpal phalangeal joints. The Watt test was designed to isolate the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis tendons while giving the patient active control over the pain elicited by the test. To perform the test, ask the patient to maximally flex his wrist within his pain margin while keeping his thumb fully extended and abducted. Remember, extension of the thumb is a movement of the thumb towards the radial side in the plane of the palm and abduction is a movement away from the palm. The examiner applies a gradually increasing abduction resistance to the thumb. When a patient is unable to maintain the force against the examiner, the patient is free to release the pressure and the test is complete. This test is positive if the patient experiences pain on resisted pressure against the examiner. Actively contracting the APL and EPB during the what test causes shear stress on the inferior palmar border of the pulley of the first extensor compartment, thereby giving a painful exacerbation in the initial stage of Decavin's tenosynovitis. In comparison, Eikhoff's test and Finkelstein's test cause a shear between the thickened APL and EPB and the pulley or bony floor of the first compartment. The passive distension of the joints can lead to pain in other areas unrelated to Decavar's disease, as well as the radial collateral ligament, the scaph or trapezial ligament, and the carpal metacarpal ligament, which in turn can lead to false positive results. All right, this was our video on the what test. If you are curious about the original Finkelstein test, click on the video right next to me. If you really want to dive deeper into clinical reasoning for musculoskeletal complaints, check out our online courses and for a great overview of all orthopedic tests, have a look at our assessment app in the App Store or Google Play Store or get our assessment ebook. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you around. Bye.